Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Operation Freedom Briefings. The goal of these briefings and my weekly radio show, Operation Freedom, which airs out of the People's Republic of Ann Arbor on Wham Talk 1600 every Sunday from 2 to 5 Eastern, is to provide you information the bought off lamestream fake media is not going to present. You can follow our efforts. You can follow the information we present on a number of different platforms. This is the only approved YouTube channel for my original content. In addition, we also have the DaveJanda.com platform. Now on that platform, you can listen live to our radio show, 2 to 5 Eastern every Sunday, by hitting the Listen Live button in the upper right-hand corner. It's free. We're there 2 to 5 Eastern, but we're also available 24-7 at DaveJanda.com with our content. Now we have free public information on our site at DaveJanda.com. We also have the subscription service, 30 cents a day, about $9 a month. You can sign up for a month and get rid of it, but we have extra content, extra shows. Our WTF geopolitical show, where I bring information from sources I've developed over the past 30 years to the forefront, information you're not going to see on the bought off flame stream fake media. We also have our Insider Insight interview series. We recently had uh, Charles Woods on our, on our site uh, with a, a, a great interview. Charles is the father a fallen Benghazi hero, Ty Woods. And again, information you're not going to get from the fake media. We have a portion of that interview on, on this channel, on our Operation Freedom channel, for you to watch. I want to tackle the government shutdown, border security, and the border wall. A lot has happened this past week. A couple things. I believe the government shutdown that was instituted lasted 35 days, was for a number of reasons. There was a, it was a multifactorial approach that I believe were the goals and the objectives. I believe from the globalist side, if you will, from the Pelosi's and the Schumer's, and if Paul Ryan was still in Congress, he would have been in that bandwagon also. Their goal was try to pin this on President Trump and make him look like an ineffectual president and someone who could be pushed around. I believe the goals on President Trump's side were to enhance border security. Plain and simple. He also, I believe, wanted to present information to the American public and bludgeon the American public with the facts that border security is absolutely essential to the safety and security of every American citizen. That border security that entails a border wall, as well as other technological uh, programs that can be implemented, we want to decrease the drug trafficking, decrease the human trafficking, and we want to decrease the criminal activity. The president on a daily basis presented a tremendous amount of data and information about the financial costs of a civ that that that's a border but also the human costs the tragic costs of death and destruction that occur i believe his goals were to present this information on a repetitive basis look if you don't have to like donald trump you can despise donald trump the bottom line is you have to recognize that Donald Trump is a phenomenal marketer. He's phenomenal. There's no denying it. And Donald Trump knows that when you are marketing, networking something to the public, you don't just hit it once. You don't hit it twice. You don't hit it 10 times. You hit it a thousand times. And that's what he did over those 35 days. Friends of our family, have come to us in the past couple weeks and say, you know, a lot of folks we hang with who despise Trump are 100% behind him on this border security issue. They don't particularly like supporting him, but they support him. It's all about safety and security and the future of our country, having a strong, solid border. But remember, it's the opposite goal of the globalists. Just look at what they've done in Europe. Part of the globalist playbook is a destruction of sovereign entities, destruction of borders, so they can create their whatever they want, their new world order, their one world government, whatever. It's all about control to them. You know, 
This past Sunday on Operation Freedom, I had Mike Cutler on. Mike is a brilliant technician when it comes to border security. He worked for the INS for 30 years. And what Mike said is, look, all these folks saying, well, we can have drones and we can have this technological advancement. He says, that's true. He goes, I want you to think of that as being a really high-end, fancy security system for your home. But I want you to think of the border walls being your front door. He goes, you can have the most unbelievably sophisticated, high-tech security system in your home and around your home. But if the door is off its hinges and wide open, how secure is your home? That door is the wall. And I think the president drilling that home over 35 days and making his point was incredibly important for the future of our country. I also believe he used it to define his opposition. I mean, let's face it. Did you ever hear Pelosi or Schumer, anybody talking about what they were going to do to decrease the drug trafficking, the human trafficking, and the criminal activity coming across the border? I didn't. All I heard was Trump bad, Trump wall, orange man bad. I didn't hear a plan of theirs. Other than, well, wait, let's, have some, let's have some drones. Okay, but we got to listen to the guy who's had 30 years in the boat on this, Cutler. It's not enough. And listen to the people currently working at the border. They say, drones are not enough. We need a physical barrier. We need a front door on its hinges. I also believe this shutdown was, if you will, a soft run, right? So soft run. When uh, you start, when you open a business, you do a soft run. You bring some people in to uh, essentially like a rehearsal, a trial run, to see what worked and what didn't work. I believe this government shutdown, President Trump utilized as being a soft run for the real deal. There are people out there saying when President Trump reopened government, that th uh, this past Friday, that that, that was a cave-in. There are other people saying, well, that was a strategic move. Well, folks like Ann Coulter have said it's an absolute cave. He opened government. There was no money for the wall. This is a cave. And we're walking away from him. They're entitled to. I believe they're wrong. I believe this was a strategic move. I believe the first government shutdown was meant as a soft run. And it was not meant. And it was meant for, if you will, it was not meant to be the be-all and end-all of the wall. When President Trump reopened government, there were a number of things said. From Zero Hedge, Congress clears stopgap bill to end government shutdown. Trump sends warning. As expected, Congress easily advanced the three-week funding bill, three-week funding bill. So it wasn't that President Trump said, we're going to open this up till February 15th, and, well, well, actually, we're going to open it up forever. Forget the February 15th. We're just going to open it up, and no, we're not going to talk about the wall anymore. That's not what he did. Easily advanced the three-week funding bill and is now headed to Trump's desk, where he is expected to sign it later on Friday, which he did. President Trump had the last word before he signed the bill, lashing out at those who claimed he folded. So whether it's Ann Coulter or Nancy Pelosi, we suspect somebody got up Trump's nose, and we suspect that in three weeks, he will not quickly forget it. And I agree with that. Here's what he tweeted. I wish people would read or listen to my words on the border wall. This was in no way a concession. It was taking care of millions of people who were getting badly hurt by the shutdown with the understanding that in 21 days, if no deal is done, it's off to the races. You see, he defined his opposition in those 35 days. Pelosi and Schumer came out and said, reopen the government because that's the only way we're going to negotiate. And they blew off all these meetings with Trump. They never showed up. Actually, they were hanging out in Puerto Rico, partying hard, you know, with the babes in the bikinis on, on you know, right? Yeah, you saw the pictures. So they define themselves. We're not going to negotiate with you unless you open government. Okay. And they said, we're going to challenge in court. We're going to challenge in court if you do your executive order declaring a national emergency. Yet, some legal scholars that are 
backed by the globalists, came forward and said, well, actually, he has every right to do, he can do that as president. He can issue a national, executive order and a national, issue a national emergency. And yeah, and he can declare that he's going to use funds that are to build a wall. He defined his opposition. So now that he opens it up, what's happening? Nancy Pelosi says, no State of the Union, although I told you if the government was open, we would have it. Well, she already reneged on that. And were there any meetings over the weekend? Not that I'm aware of. With the White House? So he opens, he opened it to show, well, they put their markers in the ground. They're going to negotiate with me. They're going to, State of the Union's going to happen. Everything. None of that's been happening. He defined his opposition. But also, that 35-day government shutdown was a soft run on other programs that potentially could be implemented. By the way, Paul Sperry, great investigative journalist, has come out and said, Coulter's incorrect that Trump hasn't started the wall. In fact, Trump's Department of Homeland Security has been constructing a 30-foot high steel wall spanning 20 miles just west of El Paso with solid 5-foot wide steel plate at, top and, at the top and thick steel posts driven into massive 5-foot deep and 4-foot wide concrete footings. Right. And I've had that confirmed to me. That in fact, the wall is being built. In addition, during the 35 days, you started to hear something about a reduction in force protocol being instituted. Now, what that means is that if furloughed workers are furloughed greater than 30 days from the government, that they can be permanently terminated. Now, many people said, and in fact, how are they permanently terminated? This is important. They're graded on four criteria. Every department head, every agency head, every service head grades every one of their employees on four, four criteria. Tenure, if they're a veteran, veterans get preference, the length of service, and their performance. They are given a number grade. And once they are given a number grade based on those four, four criteria, they go down the list. And the lowest numbers go first. Now, the Office of Management and Budget said, well, wait a minute, because this was an emergency furlough, as opposed to administrative furlough, that 30 days really doesn't kick in. It's kind of nebulous. We're going to kick that to Office of Personnel Management. Well, what did Office of Personnel Management say in those 35 days? Well, it's kind of interesting. It said, we're considering this, and it could be that we have to issue another notice in order to switch from an administrative furlough to an administrative furlough, because once it becomes administrative furlough, heads start rolling. And in fact, there was a memo out of the Office of Personal Management saying that they have the legal authority to declare a reduction in force protocol anytime due to a shortage of funds. And then the Office of Personnel Management and the Office of Management and Budget said, well, we need to have a reorganization plans in place prior to institution of this reduction in force. Well, lest you think the President hadn't already thought of that, I take you to Executive Order 13781, dated March 13th, 2017. What's it entitled, Dave? Comprehensive Plan for, reorga for Reorganizing the Executive Branch. By the authority vested in me as President by the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America, it is hereby ordered as follows. Section 1, Purpose. This order is intended to improve the efficiency, effectiveness, and accountability of the Executive Branch by directing the Director of Office of Management and Budget to propose a plan to reorganize governmental functions and eliminate unnecessary agencies, components of agencies, and agency programs. Section 2, proposed plan to improve the eff efficiency, effectiveness, and accountability of federal agencies, including, as appropriate, to eliminate or reorganize unnecessary or redundant federal agencies. Within 180 days of this order, the head of each agency shall submit to the director a proposed plan to reorganize the agency, if appropriate, in order to improve the eff efficiency, effectiveness, and accountability of that agency. 
You see, as of March 13th, 2017, and six months after that, September 13th, 2017, the reorganization plan has already been in place. In addition, during the 35 days, something that the fake media never reported on is the Office of Personnel Management issued a warning on absence without leave, AWOL, during the shutdown. Now look, in this soft run, I believe the president wanted to see where are we most vulnerable with government agencies not opening. What they come, had come to find out was one of the agencies that that people became very concerned about, and rightfully so, was the TSA, about security, in particular at airports, at ports of entry. Well, of note, the Office of Personnel Management noted that, and put on the books, during this 35 days, at the end of the 35 days, the Office of Personnel Management gave a warning regarding exempted federal employees failing to report to work during a shutdown. If it, quote, if an exempted employee fails to report to work when required to support exempted activities, he or she will be considered absent without leave, AWOL. Quote, if an employee is exempted from furlough and therefore required to work during the shutdown yet has failed to do so, he or she would be considered AWOL during the period of work uh, of any such unauthorized absence. The agency may use its discretion based on the facts and circumstances of the employee's situation to apply appropriate consequences based on the AWOL status. In other words, employees that were AWOL during this, this government shutdown are now aware that if they do it again, when a government shutdown occurs, they're done. This was part of the shot of, of, if you will, the, the trial run, because I believe that's what that first government shutdown was. If the globalists don't come and negotiate with Trump, if there isn't money for the wall come February 15th, I believe the president will shut down the government. And this time, all the moving parts are in place. The Reduction in force protocols are set. The executive order has been set with, with the reorganization plan. It's been there since September of 2017. The AWO status is set. The Office of Personnel Management is set. The agency heads, the service heads, have all had their trial run on the reduction in force protocol and and giving number grades to all their employees. It's set. And also, what has come to the forefront is the vulnerable area of the TSA. Are you aware that there are 21 airports in the United States that have private contractors overseeing security, not the TSA? Example, San Francisco International Airport has private contractors. Did they have a work stoppage? Did they have people not showing up? No. This actually was written by Sam Harnett, actually in 2016. The pros and cons of privatizing airport security. The security at San Francisco International Airport looks like it does at any other airport in the country. There are little gray tubs in the rollers, the ticket checkers, the body scanners, but there's one hard to detect difference. The people working there are employed by a private contractor instead of the federal government. San Francisco International is one of 21 airports with privatized security. So <laughs> a number of other airports are now starting to look at that model. But here's the deal with privatized security. The TSA is still in charge. It picks and manages the contractor that then has to follow TSA protocols. Pro this from Brian Springer, director of Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport in Montana. Privatizing is not about escaping the TSA. 
but managing labor. Contractors provide a more flexible workforce for their airport, and on top of that, it's easier to show people the door, he said. Quote, if employees are not performing, they can be dealt with and dealt with appropriately, better or more effectively on a contract side than a government side, end quote. That being Brian Springer. Bottom line is this government shutdown was a trial run. It set in place many protocols. It actually educated government employees. Now, wait a minute. If you're going to be AWOL and just <laughs> not show up, well, guess what? Your, your head's on the block. It, it, it allowed agency heads and service heads to set their reduction in force protocols. And I believe it sent a strong message to the globalists by Trump. I'm getting this done. We'll know more February 15th. If the globalists don't come to the table, I believe Donald Trump will shut the government down. If they don't come to the table, and if there's no negotiation, and if he backs off on the wall, then Ann Coulter is right. He did cave. But ultimately, I don't know of Donald Trump in his life who, have, who has caved. I believe this is a strategic and negotiating move. I hope you'll join us at DaveJanda.com. We're there 24-7 for you on the free side, the public side, and also the subscription side, 30 cents a day, 9 bucks a month. I hope you join us. Please join us every Sunday for our live radio show, 2 to 5 Eastern. Stream it live, DaveJanda.com, upper right-hand corner. Just hit the listen button, and we're there for you. As we sign off every segment, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time. Dream big and dare to fail.